Hello everybody, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today I am going to show you a game engine that is powered by C Sharp 3D game engine up and coming called the Flax Engine. Now this one is actually not available for download yet. It's coming in beta very soon, so you're getting a bit of a quick preview release of this. Now the Flax Engine is definitely entering a crowded market. There are a lot of C Sharp powered 3D game engines in this day and age. And with the Zenko engine going open source just a few days ago, their timing may not be ideal. So let's find out if Flax is going to be able to compete in this space. Now this is free to use initially and it's going to be working on a flat commission structure. Uh, it's either 4 or 6%, I believe, and it's not been finalized. It's very early days, so uh, don't put too much into that. But this is ultimately going to be a commercial engine. Now, if you're interested in learning more, the website is available at flaxengine.com. As you'll see, if you go to download, um, open beta is in fact coming soon. But like I said, we're going to give you a bit of a sneak preview. And you can also read their updates on the various different features and functions as they add them to the Flax engine. So without further ado, let's take a look at the engine. First, I'm going to show you how you basically create your own first project, how to bring assets in. And then I'm going to walk through some of their particular samples. And as you can see, when you launch Flax, you get a Flax launcher. Very um, Unreal Engine-esque. In fact, their color scheme is just straight out taken from Unreal Engine, and I'd recommend they change that. It's looking a little clonish so far. But the engine itself, come on in here. Basically, you want to create a new project, go to New Project, uh, pick the type you want it to be, pick you where you want it to be, give it a name. So, my YouTube demo. And then simply create your project. Oh, I already used that one. Huh. Oh, no, here. Let's go ahead. And so we just created my YouTube demo. It's available right here. Now you just go to the three bars or the hamburger and click open. And this will ultimately give an error. Okay. Let's try that again. All right, there we go. So again, this is a very, very early version, 0.1 version. So if you're gonna run into a couple of hiccups, that is to be expected. To be honest, I actually don't. For the most part, the engine works exactly as I expect it to. Here you are in the world. You'll notice that there is an editor view over here and a game view over here. So you can basically preview your game in action. It creates a pretty simple game for you. I'm going to go ahead and delete what they created for us. Because what we're going to do is go ahead and show asset importing. Now the coding in this is ultimately done with C Sharp. Unfortunately, right now, it's Visual Studio 2015. And I'm doing everything in my power to not install Visual Studio 2015 again. I don't like all the bloat that it puts on this system. So right now, I'm not going to preview the coding. Uh, but I will show you bringing in assets and, and the renderer as a result. So here we are. <coughs> Excuse me. And I just got to find an asset to bring in. I believe I have something in my downloads folder. Uh, M3 Grant. All right, so here we go. So there is an asset. It is in uh, GLTF format. Uh, so we're just going to go ahead into the content folder, go back to our asset, and drop it in. Uh, this brings up the importing. You got the various different options available. Once you've got something that you like, just go ahead and say import, and it will bring it in. Uh, so there it is. Let's give that guy a rename because scene is not a good name. Let's so rename and we will call this guy tank. All right, so there is our tank model. Over here is our scene graph. Now we can go ahead and create an instance of it by basically dropping tank in the world or in the scene. Oh, no, just in the world. All right, so there we go. We just created a tank. We can select it here and you will see over here uh, typical component layout. So we've got 17 different entries that go together to make up this model. I want to reposition it, so make sure that this guy is at zero, zero, and zero. All right, and now, <laughs> excuse me, let us select our tank. I think it's control, nope, not control F. All right, edit, oh, sorry, scene. Uh, align viewport with actor, and there you go. So there is our tank in the world. We can use standard WASD keys to navigate around. We're currently actually inside it. But there you can see the rendering quality of the imported assets, and it does a very good job of importing things. So in a nutshell, this is your editing environment. Pretty clean, pretty straightforward, very nice render. It's actually very pretty results, I have to say, right off the hop. Now there are a couple things I do find odd. For example, I can undock like this, and I can bring around and I can dock anywhere in the world. So we can really customize the render. So we can have split viewport if we have our game on one side and our viewport on the other, you know, size those out accordingly. But 
what I can't do as of yet is create multiple viewports, uh, which hopefully that is functionality that's added soon, because that definitely seems like something that is lacking. So now that's basically the end. And what I'm going to do now is show you um, some of their actual demonstrations. So come over here and you'll see they've got a materials, a graphics feature, and there was a physics feature right here. So we'll open this guy up. So open up the graphics feature. And these are basically simple projects that demonstrate the features and functionality of the Flax engine. So here you see the various different graphics technologies that you can do with Flax. I go ahead and do a run. This will go ahead and build our project. We're in play mode. All right. So now you'll see there's global illumination, screen space ambient occlusion, screen space reflections, environment probes, depth of field. So bloom lens flares, color grading. So you see there are a lot of various different rendering options. Realistic skies, how do I trigger that one? I think it goes above. Volumetric fog, lighting effects. So we got uh, area lights, light fall off, and so on and so forth. And that is basically the rendering and graphical material stuff that we're looking at. We head on back over, we've also got one showcasing the physics functionality of the Flax engine. And it is basically what you expect in terms of physics functionality. We'll let that open up and I'll run that one quickly. So you can see there's already a fair good amount of um, things you can go ahead and get your hands dirty with once this is available. So we've got rigid bodies, Triggers, collision events, whoop, uh, physics materials, box collider, sphere collider, capsule collider, mesh colliders, distance joints, hinge joints, you can open and close that door, uh, slider joints, and joints with a motor. And then the final demonstration of functionality is there, oh, what was it? Let's get out of here and go find it. Uh, so we did graphics, uh, so let's go look at material features. And this is basically your surface level shader functionality. And da, 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 da. again, that, that color scheme looks awfully Unity-like, so hopefully they, they fix that in, in sorry, on Unreal Engine-like, and hopefully that gets resolved in time. So here you see they got PBR, kind of a, a go-to requirement. But again, the renderer does a very good job. It's a very clean renderer. Material color, metallic, metalness, roughness, uh, specular, emissive, animated, transparencies, opacity, alpha channel, vertex offset, normal mapping, parallax occlusion, two-sided, material instances, layered materials, forward pass, post effects, and decals. So, there's definitely a lot of graphic functionality already packed into this engine today. Now, the question mark is, is the space to create it? And I guess time will tell. Now, once again, I am showing you a very, very early version of this engine. And as it matures, I'll definitely jump in and show it to you in a bit more detail. Now, I didn't show you one thing. It's basically how composition works. So let me hit escape, exit uh, mode here. What you do is when you've got your object in the scene, you can add various different attributes to them. So, for example, I could come here in main and go ahead and create... A new, oops, a new, um, and then, you know, I could go ahead and create a, uh, let's say I brought in a model. So there, we've got a model actor right here, and then you can go ahead and keep kind of layering functionality on top of them. So, for example, I want to add physics to this guy. I could add a rigid body to it and a collision body to it and so on. And that's basically how the world is composed. Now you'll notice over here, you've also got your different options. So for example, I could create a spherical mesh by basically just dragging that into my scene. And there is the sphere that it created available right there. So then if I wanted to now, I could create physics on this guy once again, by just basically adding physics this way, or by going here and grabbing a rigid body and bringing it over and dropping it on. Now that was annoying that it expanded like that. But as you see, you basically, it's, it's your typical component based composition. It's just the layout's a little bit different than what you would expect. Now, what you're going to see over here is tools that basically don't exist yet. I'm assuming in time, these are going to be for, uh, foliage and landscape development. Maybe, I'm not really sure what the paintbrush will be, 
but that looks a lot like a plant and that definitely looks like landscape. So there's more functionality coming in the future. It's just not there as of yet. Uh, but definitely it's, it's an interesting engine. You see the source code is integrated this way. And here, I'll give you an example of some source code, but um, again, I think this does depend on Visual Studio 2015 unless I'm mixing things up. So I'm not going into a whole lot of detail there. However, what I will showcase before moving on, especially for a young project like this, is the documentation. And the documentation is actually really impressive. So we'll get back to that in a second. So here we are, opened up our project. So that one is our source. So here's exit on escape script. And there you can see how the source code works. You inherit from a script class, you override um, the update function, which basically called each pass through the game loop. Pretty straightforward. Here's your player script. Again, there's a character controller class. Um, you implement your logic in update or fixed update. Um, you know, probably about what you expect in this day and age from C Sharp game engine. It, it's a pretty consistent API to what other engines are doing in this time and age. So let's head on back over here. And finally, I will show you the documentation. And the documentation is actually available online, even if you're not part of the alpha or beta, just go to docs.flaxengine.com. And you got the full manual, basically walks you through how you can do pretty much everything we just showcased. And then we go over here and we got the straight up scripting API. And you see there's full references for all of the information there. And the cool thing is it's actually, um, it's consequential. It's not just auto-generated gibberish. There's actual real good. So here, let's go to animation graph as picking one at complete random. And you'll see there generally there are comments and descriptions and it actually makes sense of what you're dealing with and what you're working with. So it's, it's actual documentation that's useful, not just there to tick off a box. So again, it's very early on. It's a big question mark of if the world is ready for another game engine, if the, if the space is just getting too crowded or not. But as you saw from the rendering quality, it's, it's actually quite sharp already. So this could be a very good looking engine in the future. Uh, they've just got a hell of a lot of competition. Um, especially as I mentioned earlier, they're very similar to Zenko and Wave Engine. And uh, Zenko going open source has to be a bit of a gut punch to the developers here. But you know, if they develop enough there to distinguish and become um, you know, an appealing alternative, they could be a very interesting future here. So once again, this is early on, uh, keep an eye on it. Eventually this download will show the open beta um, or you can follow them on Twitter to get updates and it'll be interesting to see exactly where the Flax engine goes. Again, a very quick early preview because again, this is an early engine, but there's a lot of robust features and functionalities in there. So when that open beta does come, uh, I suggest you check it out. It's a very, uh, let's say, mature, immature engine. So what did you think? Do you think there's space in the world for another C-sharp powered game engine? Uh, are you open source or die? Would this work for you? Would you consider it or no way in hell? I'm interested in knowing. Let me know in the comments down below and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.